as they were walking along the road, a man said to him, said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. Ooh, that man had an audacious heart, right? I love it. I can relate to him. Look at Jesus' response. Jesus replied, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. And for years, this ate at me because I'm like, what's he trying to say? And then I finally got it. He said, oh yeah, big boy, let's go. You're going to have to run with me because I ain't stopping. I got work to do. You want to roll with me? Let's go. Let's go. Stay on my heels. I got stuff to do, places to be. You want to be with me? You're going to have to do that stuff. You're going to have to want to be in those places forsaking everything else. Let's go. And that's what he's calling us to today. All he's encouraging us is let's go. I ain't got time to lay my head down. Why? This is when I work. This is when work needs to be had. And tell me, look around this world right now. Work needs to be done. The harvest, ah, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Why? Because too many of them making up too many excuses and they waiting on permission. He's saying, open your eyes. The fields are white for harvest. We got wars. We got rumors of wars. We got pestilence. We got famine. We getting close, people. It's time to go to work. People need to hear this gospel. Quit waiting on the permission of someone else to say, um, what you're supposed to be doing when God has told you already what you're supposed to be doing, just get to doing it. Why? Because it's time to work. So let's go, big boy. Let's step up into it, what we got to do. Mm. Don't be like these next cats. He said to another man, follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. What? You think, well, that's a legitimate excuse. Listen to me. You don't even say how old dad was in this. Daddy might have only been 50. He might have had another 20, 25 years. Just give me a little bit more time. Let me get his blessing first before I go and follow you. Let me go turn to dad. Listen, daddy might not have been on his deathbed. This may just be the easiest way ever out of the call, right? I need daddy's blessings first. No, you don't. You got the heavenly father's blessing. When he says follow, you dare follow. That's all I'm trying to encourage you with today. I just daring you, daring you to live. Why? Because I've been on both sides of this equation. I remember the times when I was hating where I was going in life, right? I remember gripping my steering wheel an hour and a half one way to a job I hated, white knuckling that bad boy thinking, what am I doing with my life? And now I wake up, when I wake up these days, I love what I do. I can't wait to come and do this. Why? Because I dare follow. When people said it's impossible, you could never make a living doing this, I, okay? But he already is going, so I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna trust him because he has the authority of his father. And I know, I know it shouldn't be done like this. My feet shouldn't be on these cushions, but the sun's going and I wanna go with him. And evidently it's okay because daddy hasn't stopped him yet because he would if he had to. And I just want to see where Jesus is going. That's all I want to see because there's a vision in my heart of seeing stadiums come to Christ. There's a vision in my heart of seeing both here and abroad except Jesus. There's a, stadium, um, a vision in my heart of seeing nations summoned by this gospel. And I just want to see it played out. That's it. I ain't asking permission from, the, from um, anybody else because I believe my God has already spoke. And all I'm doing is daring to follow. That is it. And I'm daring you to do the same because God has got greatness for your life. Because you're his son, you royalty. He's not withheld the crown. What else is he gonna withhold from you? Mm.